Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome uh, to uh, Global Compliance Panel, uh, to our live webinar on IT infrastructure and the network qualification, introduction and strategies for compliance and system of time. Uh, my name is David, your host for today, and on behalf of our team, I would like to say thank you for being part of this event. Uh, today's presenter is Dr. Huber. Uh, Ludwig Huber, PhD, is Chief Advisor for Global FTA Compliance at Lab Compliance. He is the author and editor of www.labcompliance.com, the online resource for validation and FDA compliance. He is also the author of the books uh, Validation and Computerized Analytical Systems and Validation and Qualification in Analytical Laboratories in Pharma Healthcare. Now, we're really honored to have someone as distinguished uh, such as Dr. Huber to present this webinar. Now, before we begin, I would like to inform you of the program outline for this training session. Uh, the webinar is for 75 minutes duration. Uh, first, Dr. Huber will take you through today's webinar, highlighting the areas that would be covered, and he would then share with you his presentation. Uh, we also request all to hold back your questions until the Q&A window begins. Ten minutes of time will be allotted towards the end of the webinar, uh, during which your questions will be answered. Now, if for any reason you get logged out of this training session or the teleconference, I request you to follow the same procedure to join in again. I hope everyone is uh, ready to start the session. I request Dr. Hooper to take it from here. Yes, thank you very much, David, for introducing me, and thanks, everybody, for joining us today. As David said, this presentation is about network and IT infrastructure qualification, and the presentation should help you to get a good understanding on what network qualification is all about, and it also should help you to develop strategies for compliance and system uptime, and I also want to make you familiar with reference material you either have already got, or I will show you also where you can get some more material and I hope uh, this will help you to easily implement what you have learned today during this presentation. So with this, we go to the uh, next slide, and this shows the today's agenda. It gives an overview of today's seminar, and I will start the presentation with uh, just giving you a couple of good reasons why we do all this, and also give you an overview on regulations, on guidelines, and even more importantly, on inspection findings. Next, I will give an overview on current industry practices on organizations that have developed some guidance documents like the GAMP. The next topic will be then a step-by-step -step procedure for network qualification. And this will include initial testing, ongoing testing, very important for network qualification is change control to handle changes in a very controlled manner where we talk about planned changes and we talk about unplanned changes and uh, typical example for unplanned changes are security patches we may receive from time to time. Then at the end I will go through a case study, I will go through an audit simulating an audit, what are the questions, what are the inspectors looking at internal auditors, and then also, of course, FDA inspectors. And then, as David said, at the end, we will have a question and answer session. You also can, uh, if you have any question now, you also can send them in through the chat. And uh, when we start the Q&A session, I will start uh, answering those questions that came in in writing. And in the meantime, you can think about any additional question you may have on the seminar. So this slide uh, shows a collection of reference material I have prepared for, for this. Um, and uh, so you already have received a couple of those. So for example, you should have received the network qualification plan. You should have received one or more SOPs. And uh, you also should have received a checklist. So, and if you, I will show you some more material. We could not send out everything, but uh, if you see one or the other uh, icon here in this way during the presentation, just make a note and send me an email and uh, refer to the document and uh, mention as a subject or as a reference Global Compliance Panel 100, uh, Seminar number 105. Okay, then I will send you the documents with, by email. Now, uh, this, is, uh, this gives you some reasons why network infrastructure should be qualified. We talk about qualification here. We don't talk about validation. There are two types of reasons, and one reason is the business reason, 
and uh, later on I will talk about compliance. The business reason is important because if you have a good control over the network, the failure rate is reduced, and if there is a problem, it is much easier to diagnose when everything is well documented, everything is controlled, and you can find documentation easily. You can find easily where you can where, where the individual network devices are located, how they are connected to each other. Also, important here is which uh, firmware is uh, is installed on which device, uh, because it helps it much easier if you call a help desk to diagnose the problem. Also, another reason is that network typically the uh, they support multiple applications. They applications all should be validated. However, if you qualify the network, for example, a network device and uh, or even a data center and so on, and uh, you qualify the network, all components shared by multiple applications are only qualified once, like a router and so on. Examples are network components and, and also can mention servers, switches and so on. So definitely this reduces the overall validation cost, the reduces the and increases the overall efficiency. Then we talk about compliance. This is another reason why we qualify the network, because networks are considered to be computer systems, and as such they should be qualified, and most important here is a good documentation of the network infrastructure as I will go through. So network qualification helps to increase the efficiency, increase the uptime, and also in the area of compliance to make sure that the network is secure, that the data are in uh, and also that, the, uh, that the, the, the network qualification ensure that the data are transferred accurately to the destinations they should do also with the uh, full quality. So we talked about compliance. So uh, what are the uh, regulations? What are the laws underlying so underlying this? There are a couple of regulations or laws that require networks to be controlled. Just because applications supported by the network, they can have a high impact on compliance uh, in all areas. So the first one here, I have a couple of regulations here. The first one is the HIPAA or Healthcare Insurance and Portability and Accountability Act. This uh, rule affects anyone involved in the healthcare industry, for example, hospitals. Uh, they, it involves clinical laboratories, but also insurance companies. Then the second one here is uh, on this list is the Sabanis Oxley Act. This uh, federal law has established controls for public companies including financial service firms. And the third one we talk about, this is, which is on the list, is FDA 21 CFR Part 11. It's FDA's regulation on electronic records and signatures. Uh, this, is, uh, this regulation has been developed by the Food and Drug Administration. And companies working in an FDA-regulated environment, they have to comply with this regulation when they use computers to handle records that are required by FDA regulations. And uh, because uh, networks are used to transfer, to, to transport those records, of course, also networks have to comply with this regulation. Now, what are the uh, regulatory requirements? So unfortunately, or fortunately, whatever, whatever we want to see it, there are no specific requirements for network qualifications spelled out in any of the regulations. They always talk about controls, uh, but there, there are some general requirements within the regulations that can only be met if regulations, if the networks are well controlled. For example, they all require controls to be put in place to ensure that records are trustworthy and this turns in, in network security, authenticity, and also integrity of data. Most specific requirements are spelled out in, in FDA's Part 11. For example, that they spell out that systems should be validated, users of systems should be recognized by the computer, 
and changes made to a record should be also recognized and documented by a computer. All regulations require network security, record maintenance to ensure authenticity, integrity, confidentiality, and also what is a very important short and long-term availability of data. Uh, this requires also a, a tightly, very good configuration of the networks and control. So uh, we will talk about this also a little bit later. Now we have, can we find information on what we should do. So far we know that we have learned that regulations require you to do something, but uh, we, we really did not learn where you can find that information on what exactly should be done. So uh, this slide here has some information. The FDA has developed a couple of guidelines related to computers, and uh, there is also one more recent guideline related to network security for medical devices. And even if you are not uh, working in the medical device area, but in pharmaceutical development or manufacturing, I think the FDA, they develop these guidelines by one division, and uh, so, uh, but the, the requirements are basically it's the same for all FDA, FDA regulated industries so you easily can try to get this guidance this guidance document and uh, and learn from it uh, but on also in this guidance there is no specific information about network qualification most specific information can be found in FDA inspection reports i will show you some examples later inspection reports are so-called uh, FDA uh, 483 inspection and observation reports, warning letters, establishment inspection reports, and so on. And there are <coughs> there are some available related to networks, and also more related to network systems. In Europe and also other international countries, uh, the PICS guide on good practices for computer systems is by far the best source, and it also has some requirements for networks. So a uh, very good idea to, to, to try to get hold of it, because uh, this is, uh, in general, when you work in a regulated, the FDA regulated area, or also other regulated areas, it's a, it's a good guidance, it's very detailed, and even it has not been developed specifically for FDA regulated industry, but in general for, they call it a uh, good computer practice uh, used in GXP, so good laboratory practice, good manufacturing practice, and good clinical practice regulations. And I think this guidance also will be becoming more important because I have heard that also the United States FDA Food and Drug Administration has to apply to become a member of the PICS Pharmaceutical Inspection Convention Corporation Scheme so, uh, so that, that's the reason I would I would strongly recommend. Then the Institute of Validation and Technology has developed also a an, draft on network qualification, and also in that one I, I was a member of the team. Also, there was one person from the FDA participating, so it's also quite.